Hey guys, this is Ross from CryptoCrane. Today I'll be reviewing the brand new Ant Router R1 LTC Litecoin Miner from Bitmain. The first thing you'll notice is that they put some serious thought into the packaging for these little guys. The back of the device features a built-in two-prong plug, and the front has an Ethernet port and a USB port. It feels surprisingly solid and sturdy despite only weighing 5.4 ounces. In this demo, I will be plugging it into a 120 volt circuit. The AntRouter R1 LTC is compatible with voltages between 100 and 220. Bitmain markets this device as a Litecoin miner that also happens to be a USB charger and a 2.4 GHz wireless N router, in which one would presumably connect a network cable from their existing router and then broadcast Wi-Fi to other nearby devices. Requiring a network cable would completely ruin the hope of having a simple Litecoin miner capable of being plugged in anywhere and connecting to your existing Wi-Fi network. Fortunately, it's running the same OpenWRT software as the AntMiner series. That means we can configure the R1 LTC to act as a wireless client without requiring any unnecessary cables. It strikes me as odd that Bitmain would not advertise this ability. Next, I'm going to show you how to configure the R1 LTC as a Wi-Fi client. After powering on, the Ant Router will create its own Wi-Fi network starting with the word Ant Router. Connecting to it will allow you to reach the Ant Router's OpenWRT management interface. After a few seconds, the R1 LTC will assign your computer an IP address. The R1 LTC's own IP address will be 192.168.200.1. This is the same address that you'll need to enter into the web browser in order to access the web interface. The default username and password are both root. Once logged in, you'll need to navigate to the Network tab and then to the Wi-Fi sub-tab. From there, you can click the Scan button to see a list of all Wi-Fi networks within range. Select the network you'd like to join and then click Join Network. Next, enter the Wi-Fi passphrase. Then, change the firewall zone from WAN to LAN. Finally, hit the Submit button. When the screen reloads, click the Save and Apply button to join the R1 LTC to the wireless network. At this point, the R1 LTC will stop broadcasting the Ant Router Wi-Fi network and join the network that you specified. To continue, we'll need to connect the computer to the same network. The next step might be a little tricky. I need to determine the IP address that was given to the R1 when it joined my Wi-Fi network. The easiest way to do this is to log into my Wi-Fi router and view the list of devices that have IP addresses. Once I find the IP address, I type it into the address bar like we did before. Remember, the default username and password are both root. Now that it is truly wireless, we should enter our pool information under the Miner tab. You'll notice just like the AntMiner series, Bitmain pre-configures these devices to mine to their own pool. Let's go to the R1 LTC configuration tab and enter our own pool information. Clicking the Save and Apply button will restart the mining engine using the new settings. Go to the R1-LTC status page to make sure that everything is working properly. Don't be alarmed if you don't see any activity for the first one to two minutes. Also, it can take another couple of minutes before it reaches full speed. The most important number to watch is the mega hashes per second average in the top right. A day and a half later, it looks like the average mining speed is slightly faster than the 1.29 mega hashes per second advertised by Bitmain. Interestingly, it looks like my backup pool accepted some shares. This must mean that my primary pool was unavailable for a short period of time. Even more interestingly, the hashing speed reported by my primary pool is even faster than the speed reported by the R1 LDC itself.
This is probably just a symptom of the way pools measure hashing speed. They don't actually know what speed the device is running at, so they attempt to estimate your speed based on the number of valid shares your device submits. Now that the R1 is actually mining, let's check out the power usage again. At full speed, it appears to be pulling between 3.0 and 3.1 watts. Not bad. Especially since it's mining as fast as the most powerful graphics cards available while using less than 1 one hundredth of the power. Overall, I'm very impressed with the device's build quality and performance. It's great for those looking to dip their toe into mining without purchasing something more powerful like the Ampminer L3+. At the moment, it's very difficult to get your hands on these due to Litecoin's recent surge in popularity. We do have a few available on our Amazon store and should have even more available in the near future. Check out the link in the description if you're interested.